So at the start of October, I took part in my first ever game jam for Ludum Diary 54, and the results are in. Drum roll, please. Eh, I did alright. So out of the 489 compo submissions, I came in 214, which is just in the top 50%, and I think is pretty impressive for my first go. To be fair, I'm happy with most of my category, except fun, which I only got 313th for. I think this is largely because there was a big bug that I missed when I uploaded the game. It also didn't help that I forgot to put in a tutorial, which meant that people were going in blindly. So if I'd fixed those things up sooner, I like to think my fun score would have been a bit more in line with everything else. But on a more positive note, my best score was my humour, which I'm very pleased with. People love the alien clients and the room names, which is awesome. I planned on adding a bit more humour too, but I'm glad the actual work I put in was appreciated by everyone. For my first time making my own audio, getting 146 is much better than I thought, and ranking in the top 100 for theme and innovation is an incredible result for me. So after my initial submission, I made two updates to the game, one with bug fixes and one with some extra polish. So the bug that I stupidly left in was that the room conditions would often spit out impossible requests, such as wanting 8 dinosaur dens in a floor plan that is only 5 tiles large, or simultaneously wanting a plan with more than 5 bloody rooms and exactly 4 bloody rooms at the same time. Basically, this happened because the original system blindly chucked conditions together, and while there was some checking, it clearly didn't work very well. So to fix it, I selected my category conditions first, such as household and transport rooms, and limited it to a max of two conditions, and they must be of different types. Then I go through the specific room conditions, like pentagram chamber and bubble bathrooms, and only select them if they work with the larger category condition. And this worked really well. I believe there are still a few instances where this occurs, but it's now so infrequent that it doesn't affect gameplay that greatly. I would have loved to add more to the first update, but rules say that you can only make game-breaking bug changes during the rating period, which sucks. But for the second update, I added all the polish I didn't get time to add the first time, and some extra changes based on the feedback I received from players. I added titles to each room collection and added letters on each tab to make them easier to read. I added a check system which updates as you fill out the room and shows which conditions you have and haven't met, which makes it easier to track how you're progressing. I extended the timer by a minute and a half to a total of three and a half minutes. I wrote up a little tutorial to explain the rules and give some actual context to the game. And finally, I added a little more humour with some comments from your boss based on how you did. I'm really happy with how everything turned out, and the last two updates wrap up the game quite nicely. But like everything, there are some big lessons to take away from this for next time. First of all, I'm not doing compo again. While it was fun, it was tough making everything on my own, and there was a lot of wasted time trying to make audio and some of the art, which could have been invested elsewhere. The jam version of Ludum Dare also gives me another 24 hours, which means I shouldn't have to pull an all-nighter again. Then, I need more people to test the game. I'm gonna need people on standby to test so I can get some strong feedback sooner, so I don't end up making a game that is hard to play, or just isn't fun, or riddled with bugs. Next big lesson is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. I wanted to give my players a lot of options to flesh out the game, but doing so hurt more than it helped. Game jams are basically glorified prototypes, and I approached the game all wrong. It would have been much better to simplify the idea and spend the extra time on more polish. And last but not least, I don't need to win every category. Take the game that won the best compo game, Hope Falters. It didn't come first in everything. To my surprise, I was even able to pip it in the theme category, but what it did well was that it wasn't trying to be the best at everything. It picked a few key aspects to focus on and executed them really well, a lesson that I'm still working on. Overall, this has been a real learning experience. I had an absolute blast making Mini Architects, and it was a great first game jam, although I'm not going to miss the stress and lack of sleep. Thanks to everyone who played the game and voted, a big congratulation to all the winners, there are some seriously mental games that were made, and if you want to check out Mini Architect yourself, I have left a link in the description below. That's everything for this video, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers everyone!